Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is Crash Course in Maya version 2011 skinning series. Section 3 smooth bind. In this video I'm going to discuss smooth binding, a few options inside smooth binding, painting weights, manipulating a vertex of skin weights, mirroring weights, adding influence, and normalizing weights on an object. There's a lot to cover so let's get started. In this scene I have three copies of the leg in addition, I have three joint chains that are exactly the same. Each joint chain has an IK handle, in turn is attached to a single controller. When I move the controller, they are synchronously moved like so. Alright, going to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, option box. The options I'll be discussing today are bind to, bind method, skinning method, max influences, and maintain max influences. When you click on the bind to, you'll see a few options. Joint hierarchy, selected joints, and object hierarchy. Joint hierarchy will bind every joint in the hierarchy that you have selected to your object. It doesn't matter if you select the beginning or the end of the hierarchy, it'll do the entire hierarchy. Selected joints will only uh, bind certain joints that you have selected. For instance, if I select the hip and the knee, it'll only attach the hip and the knee to this leg. Next on the list is object hierarchy, which I will not be covering in great detail. However, it allows you to attach uh, non-joint nodes and use them as joints. In this example, I will be using joint hierarchy. Next on the list is bind method. Clicking on that drop-down box, you'll see closest on in hierarchy and closest to distance. Closest to hierarchy uh, works specifically with the hierarchy as well as distance. Uh, it will give priority to uh, bones and objects higher in the hierarchy. So the root will have a, a higher priority and will be influencing objects more than the lower, like your foot. Closest to distance completely ignores the hierarchy and just goes whatever is closest. In this case, I want to be using closest in hierarchy. Skinning method is uh, something I'll be definitely getting into. There's classic linear dual quaternion, and weight blended. Classic linear allows joints to follow the skeleton as they were painted. In pinched spots like elbows and knees though, uh, the object may pinch due to lack of additional influence and will require work to fix this problem. Dual quaternion works like classic linear, but uh, does additional calculations on pinch points to help prevent loss of volume on the mesh. Weight blended is actually a combination of the two. In this case, I'll be using classic linear. Max influences is how many bones each vertex will be affected by. If you have five and you have ten bones attached to your skeleton, up to five bones will, will affect each vertex. If you have it down to zero, there's going to be no bones that's going to affect any vertex. In this case, I'll just put three because I only have three in my chain. Maintain max influence means that every vertex will have 100% influence. In this case, I want to push bind skin. When I click on uh, bind skin, I'm going to click on my controller. I'm going to move it. I'm going to go to shaded. And you will see that pinching I was talking about. You can see that the leg starts to come and you lose volume right here. And this very un unrealistic, very shoddy, doesn't look good at all. The second one I'm going to show you dual quaternion. So selecting the joints, toggle selecting the mesh, skin, bind skin, option box. I'm going to go from skinning method from classic linear to, to dual quaternion, bind skin. And going to smooth bind, or smooth shaded, I'm going to move it up and you will see the pinching still happening in the classic linear, but you can see that the dual quaternion is trying its best to keep its volume up, at the same time as making sure that the influence for each vertices is being honored. Since there's a lot of calculations in the dual quaternion, we're going to use the blend method. Selecting the joints, uh, toggle selecting in, uh, the leg, skin, bind skin, smooth bind option box, and weight blended. 
Now as unimpressive as it may be, when I go up you will see that it is doing exactly the same as classic linear. This is because dual quaternion is uh, attached to the, the information uh, on this leg. However, by default, it is going to go to classic linear. We're going to have to paint the weights to say what section is going to be affected by uh, dual quaternion. and Everything else is going to be classic linear, which actually comes up to my next section, painting weights. Painting weights is just like any other paint effect. Um, you have a paintbrush. You can just paint whatever you want on it, uh, depending on the type of uh, method or object that you have. In this case, we're going to just paint some standard weights. So to paint object weights for uh, skinning, you select on your object, go to Skin. Since this is a smooth bind, go to Edit Smooth Skin, go to Paint Skin Weights tool, and click on the option box. Instead of a window popping up, it's going to be Tool Settings. I'm not going to be going over this in great detail, but the things I'll be discussing is weight type, this window right here, paint options, opacity value, flood, and the gradient and use coloring. When you select on the bones, you will notice that there is a white to black gradient on uh, each joint. White meaning full influence, black meaning no influence and it happens with each, with each joint. If you don't like the black and white, you can always go down to the gradient. If you click on Use Color Ramp, you will see it turn into a color instead of a black and white. You will also see this color line right here, which you can influence and modify whatever color you want. For instance, I'm going to put this color, for some awkward reason, white. Why? I have not the foggiest. Either way, you can see white in between the blue and the green. I'm just going to delete that to make it. There you go. In my case, I'm going to turn it back to black and white. When it comes to painting weights, uh, there's a couple of options that I use. I use replace, add, and smooth. When you replace, you're going to replace an, uh, uh, the value of that vertex. In this case, I'm going to click on the ankle or the classic three, go to the top and just start painting. That means the ankle is going to have nearly 100% influence near the hip. Now, just because I can, I want to do the exact opposite. Clicking on the hip bone and going to the ankle. Something you may or may not notice, the fact is the hip still has 100% influence, which I will show you how to fix later. But now, when I click on the IK, you will see that the hip and the ankle are acting really awkwardly. There's also the option of flood, where you just say every piece of this model is going to have this effect. In this case, it's going to have 100% effect on the hip. So when I move, 100% effect on the hip. You can see just completely breaking here, just defiling this model. It's like a little noodle. And you can also uh, work with painting in general, which is what you're going to have to do to make sure you get the fine detail that you want. In that case, I would suggest using the add because there's full influence on the hip. Adding value instead of subtracting value is going to be more safer. So work additively, not subtractively. So click on add, and on the value, do something really small. If 1 is 100%, 0.02 is 2%. So 0.05 is 5%. And I'm going to have the knee, for some reason, start affecting this hip as well. And you start feathering your influence onto your object. This is going to be safe, effective. You're going to get better detail. It may take a little bit longer, but it's going to be, you're going to see everything as it's forming. Now comes uh, the quaternion, which I was telling you about, the dual, uh, the dual quaternion, the, the blended weight. So this is the leg with the blended weight. You're going to go back to the painting tool. You're going to go to uh, weight type. You're going to see skin weight and DQ blend weight. That's not Dairy Queen. That's dual quaternion.
So click on that. Your paintbrush is going to come back. And you're just going to put the value back to 1 and just go around the pinching spot. Now, when I go back to the side view, I'm going to go back to the controller and move it up. You'll see the pinching is no longer there, and it looks a lot like the uh, middle one. The calculations are quicker because not every vertex is being calculated by dual quaternion, and my noodle leg is just broken as all hell. Next, I'll be talking about uh, manipulating uh, the vertex, which I'll actually keep on this scene. I broke the heck out of this uh, noodle leg, so I might as well try to fix it. So I want to move this back to zero. To uh, see and modify individual vertex um, skin weight, go to Window, General Editors, Component Editor. You will see uh, the window pop up and some tabs. Go to the smooth skins. I'm going to minimize this real quick. This is going to work once you select vertices. So if you go to vertex, you want to select the majority of the lower leg. Open that window back up, and you will see classic linear shape. And on the far left column, all the vertex identifications um, that I had just selected. Over here, you will see the value of each vertex. In this case, you will see vertex uh, array 0 have 100% influence on the hip, 50% influence on the knee, and 50% influence on the ankle. That equals 200%. No bueno. It continues on with uh, 100%, 98.5%, and 1.3%. Either way, this is all over 100%. You can do a couple of things. One, you can do it manually by selecting the value and typing 1. And it'll overwrite everything else, make this 100%, as you can see, and removing these to 0. And also, if it's at 1 and you say 0.5, it will put this at 0.5 and put this at 0.5 as well. Now if you make this one 0.5 it's going to take one off of each as be as even as possible to make sure this is 0.5. So these are going to be 25% each. So you can see it's only going to be at 100%. Another way to do it is called normalizing weights. If you click on your object, click on Skin, Edit Smooth Skins, and Normalize Weights. It takes every value and drops it to its appropriate value until everything equals 1, instead of 5, 10, 15, or in this case 2.5. The weights will not change and it's still going to look broken, but everything is only at 100%. Next, I want to talk about mirroring. In this scene, you can see I have a really crappy leg. <laughs> really crappy, really blocky too. High poly, waste of geometry. Very simple. You can see a three joint chain attached to an IK, and the IK is attached to a control. So when I move the control, the leg moves. The side view, it is asymmetrical. You can see the upper leg, you can see the calf, you can see the knee. But in the front view, you can see that it is symmetrical down the middle. The th interesting thing about this is when you move the leg up, you will see that the upper leg is actually trying to get a bump over here, but there's nothing over here. What we're going to do is we're going to make this bump happen over here too. That is done by selecting your mesh going to skin, edit smooth skin, and mirror skin weights. The window that pops up is uh, pretty much a basic duplication window. It uh, does a mirror across your axes and if you want to invert things. The other thing I'm not going to go into detail about, but basically it's like the first two things you're going to be working with primarily anyway. In this case, I'll be working around the YZ axis. And when I push mirror and I move the IK handle, you will see the movement 
of the vertices that I originally wanted in the first place. So it was successfully mirrored. Next is I'll be talking about adding an influence. Adding an influence is basically adding an object and treating it like a joint. In this scene, you can see I have a basic low poly arm and an IK handle at the end. When I move the IK handle, you will see the, uh, the, the, uh, the mesh moving and the natural pinching because of the, uh, the weight type, the classic linear. What we're going to do is we're going to use this object and treat it like a bone so the elbow doesn't move. We're going to select your influence object, toggle select your skin object, go to skin, edit smooth skin, and it's the first one there, add influence object. Now the vertices that it's uh, touching will be affected 100% by that object. So when I move the IK handle, you want to see the vertices sticking to the object. Now to make it actually go with the object, it's a simple point constraint. All you do is select the uh, joint, select, there you go, toggle, select the uh, your influence object, constrain, open that up, reset, and make sure your maintain onset is turned off. <coughs> maintain offset is turned on. When you click add, your influence object will follow the joint. And now when you move, the elbow is going to keep its form. And then all you need to do now is just hide your influence object. And it'll keep its shape like a bone should. So that's it for this. Uh, next video I'll be talking about uh, rigid and interactive bindings. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time.